If you mention Othello to anyone today, the response you're most likely to get is, yes, that's Shakespeare's play about race. Well, it is about race, just as The Merchant of Venice is about anti-Semitism. But neither play is just about that, and it oversimplifies Shakespeare's work to say that it is. How much did Shakespeare know about race, or more particularly, about other races? Well, he knew something, although nothing like what we know today. There were people of African origin in the London of Shakespeare's day, although it's clear from the general term for them, blackamoors, that the playwright's contemporaries didn't distinguish between people from, say, Ethiopia, which uh, converted to Christianity in the fourth century, and Moors, a generic term for people from the North African coast who traded far and wide. In fact, the text of Othello sometimes calls the title character black and sometimes the Moor of the subtitle. It's recently been proposed, and plausibly in my view, that the playwright based his portrait of Othello, at least partly, on the Moroccan ambassador to the court of Queen Elizabeth, who very much admired him. This would help to account for the very high regard in which Shakespeare's protagonist is held by the Venetian state at large. The senators call him the noble Moor, a judgment that is loudly echoed by his devoted friend Cassio, his loyal wife Desdemona, and the governor of Cyprus, Montano, all of them white. James Earl Jones, who played the role in seven different productions over a quarter century, actually wrote a book about the play in which he describes the title character, as I quote, defined by his culture rather than his colour. So how does the play come to be seen as not only about race, but about racism? Well, it's all there in the first act and sometimes later. Desdemona's father, Brabantio, and her would-be suitor, Rodrigo, are out-and-out -out racists and don't mind admitting it. So what about Iago, who is there egging them on? My view is that this engine of evil is too intelligent to be a racist, or more precisely, that he always sees the person under the skin but he knows all too well how to exploit racism in others. Of course, he hates Othello, although not because his general is racially or even culturally different, but because he knows that Othello is a better person than he is. In fact, Iago hates everyone. He's a textbook misanthrope. He has it in for Cassio, not so much because the other man has the job he thinks he deserves himself, but because he envies Cassio's moral superiority. As he puts it in the play's most revealing line, Cassio hath a daily beauty in his life that makes me ugly. That fundamental resentment Divines defines this villain and drives his every action against every character who needs to be brought down. Man, woman, black, white. No wonder at the end of the play that Othello comes to recognize Iago as a demi-devil. So Iago's hatred goes beyond race and gender. It's the most elemental kind of evil, the product of hell itself, which would have been specially frightening to an audience at a time in Christian history of widespread belief in the possibility of damnation. It's significant that Iago's role is much the longest in the play. 
Indeed, he has more to say than any Shakespeare character but Hamlet and Richard III, and their plays are much longer. So when we rightly acknowledge that this play is about race and racism, we should also remember that that's not all it's about, or even mainly. <laughs>